Hey guys, what is half step progressing when it comes to project scheduling and maybe using tools like Primavera P6? What is half step progressing? Or maybe you've heard the term bifurcation. Well, I wanna really explain it really well, give you a very visualized example so that you know what this is all about, how it's used, what it's for. Let's go. Most of the time, half-step progressing is really well known to guys who are doing forensic delay analysis. This is kind of some of their bread and butter. But I encountered it as a scheduler myself where I was asked as a scheduler for a contractor by the claims consulting company to progress in this way and I didn't know why and I didn't know what it was all about. So let me explain what happens. There's two steps in the half-step progressing. Typically when we do a progress update, a monthly progress update, we grab the last update schedule, make a copy of it, we input all of our progress information into that schedule, we reschedule, and we go. But you know, there's a little more to it than that because I know that we don't actually only input our progress information, we're often tweaking some of the remaining work. We're often rescheduling things or mitigating or doing things like that. And what a half step progress does is it divides progress from mitigation. So let's talk about the first step. What we're going to do is we're actually going to create two update schedules. We're going to do step one where all we do is input our progress information, our actuals, our percent completes, and we shrink our remaining durations. That's all we're allowed to do. Okay. In that update, you're going to save that update as update schedule dot one. Then we're gonna make a copy of it and we're gonna to move to update part two, the second step. And this is where the forensic guys call this non-progress updates, or I like to say mitigation. It's probably not only that, could be changes, other things. Regardless of the terminology, these are the typical things that you would do in your second step. You might add remove activities. You might change logic if you were going to do it. You might change your original durations, your original estimates for activities that aren't started. You might change your legs, your calendars. These two are important. This is the mitigation stuff that I'm talking about. Changes to remaining duration, not accompanied by change to a percent complete. What that means is my activity's half done and I've revised how much effort it's going to take to finish the rest of it. Increase remaining duration of not started activity, again, revising our estimates. These are called non-progress updates. We're going to put those into part two, step two, and save that copy. Now let's do a quick example, give you some visuals, you can see how this works. Okay, let's start with step one. So here's a schedule. We have one month of progress. Let's just say one activity was progress. Let's go and do a kind of a quick step-by-step -step of updating some of these activities using the half-step method. So we're doing step one. All we did is we completed it uh, up to the next progress update point. And as you can see, we started it late. So that forced that activity to move a little bit later. We didn't adjust any of the remaining duration uh, in terms of revising our estimate. All we did is progress it, actual start, and put a percent complete into it. Let's do another activity. This one's really easy. I just did it, completed the entire activity as per schedule. And then to give you a contrasting example, in the third activity, I actually started it early. Once again, earlier than I anticipated, and you can kind of see the result. Okay, so very simple updates. Now, all I did here is reschedule my project. And as you can see, there are some shifts, right? The uh, future activities have moved and my finished milestone has been delayed. What's the total effect? Let's say we're delayed 10 days due to just progress. That's important. What we want to do is we want to, again, separate progress changes from non-progress changes. So let's do step two. By the way, if you're getting good value from this video, please like it. It helps the algorithm to put our videos up front. And if you enjoy this kind of content, just go ahead and subscribe. We are constantly generating videos like this. Okay, let's move on to step two. 
Now let's look at this activity down here. Even though it's in the next update period, let's say we have a calendar change. And that calendar change adjusts the duration of that activity. That's a typical step two type of thing. What else? Let's go up to the top activity. Let's do some mitigation. Now, I know this happens all the time, right? Because we want to continue to show we're able to hit our deadline, we're able to hit our finish date. We mitigate by changing those remaining duration dates. We are finding ways to make things happen quicker, uh, more efficiently, and that's what happens. We do some mitigation like that. Now, if we reschedule this mitigation, we'll see some effects here. You can see that pulled things back, and that also affected my finished milestone. So that's our step two. We gained four days due to the mitigation. So what's the net effect of these updates then? As you can see, we were delayed 10 days due to progress, but we gained four days due to mitigation. So that's why we do this type of updating. It's to be able to determine what was due to progress and what was due to mitigation. Those two things are really important when it comes down to forensic delay analysis. And I'm telling you some of this because we're actually running our forensic delay analysis course right now. And some of these questions are coming up. This is one of the things that you might encounter as a scheduler be forced or asked in your schedule specification to perform these two step updates. And this is why this makes it really clear what you're doing. Uh, you can be very clear where delays are happening, if they're on your side or if they're on the owner's side. So this really helps paint a much clearer picture. I hope you learned something. I'm Michael. I'll see you again soon. Happy planning.